Hello. Well, today I'm here to finish up my overall discussion of uh, the Scream franchise. Um, um, of course, for the last, uh, then this month, I've just you know, talked about all four films and given my overall thoughts on them. Um, I enjoy every uh, entry in the franchise. Um, um, some more than others. Um, but even the ones that I guess perhaps I might not enjoy as much as others, I still find um, enjoyment I find enjoyment in, in all these films. Um, yeah. You know, these, uh, as I, I mentioned before, the initial three films were the first uh, complete uh, horror franchise I ever saw um, in terms of at least slasher and horror because um, I I had seen all the Universal Monster films before but for Scream that was the first time I saw each of and every one of them and of course Scream 4 was made and I saw that when it came out and I've rewatched it over the years and I think this is a horror franchise that, um, which I've said before, but I'll say it again here. I think if people aren't interested really in horror, specifically in slasher films, I think Scream could be a very good start. Um, though with that, um, you know, if they like the, this, uh, these films, it could all, it would also likely sp uh, spoil certain elements uh, or plot points to various famous horror films you know um like Friday the 13th for example <clears throat> the ending of that is sort of spoiled because of it is a bit of a surprise if you have never seen any of the films and you know and you know you believe you absolutely know for a fact who the killer of, uh, is because of the franchise you know it'd be like you no, early in the first film, it turns out, no, that is not at all. Um, the killer is not who one would think. Um, and some other films, of course, but, you know, uh, watching some of those films like Halloween, <clears throat> Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, perhaps some of the first early films in each, like, uh, franchises of, like, Friday the 13th, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, might be good, and then show Scream, because, you know, you know, it's very, it's a murder mystery, which I think that would probably, uh, appeal to a bit of a broader audience, because, you know, in these movies, it's like, who's the killer? Until you watch the films, you won't know. Um, and there's also comedy, which I think helps. You know, it helps alleviate some of the uh, darkness. You know, uh, of course, it is like dark comedy, black comedy, whatever you want to uh, call it. But you know, there is comedy in it nonetheless. And so, because of the comedy, it's real fun. It's real fun to watch. laugh maybe not necessarily uh, uh, laugh hard or anything but you can laugh and enjoy the film you can enjoy what's going on and uh, that's something that um, I think is good it's good for this this kind of genre uh, for a film like Scream to exist um, because you know as much as it is dark with the violence and the tone and 
be very creepy, disturbing, and all that. You know, when you have some humor to balance that with, not just with the first one, but, you know, all of them, it's enjo more enjoyable. People can enjoy it more, and it's, uh, people are able to have a, uh, uh, I guess, like a better uh, experience than if it was just a straight-up slasher film with little to no humor. Um, there are films like that that exist um, <clears throat> within the horror genre, specifically ones that would be considered slasher films. Um, not to say any of those are bad, but, you know, it can be very... Uh, there are films that are a bit... Uh, dreary to say the least you know it can you know not a whole lot to lighten the mood because of how dark it is and um um i've, I've heard some people wonder why people like horror films um and wes craven actually has a very good quote as to why he believes people uh like horror films when you go to see a horror movie you're already scared you know you may not necessarily even know you're scared, but you're scared, you're like you know, because the real world is scary. You know, it, it's scary enough as it is. Uh, uh, you know, living day to day, um, there are terrible things that happen every day, um, regardless if it happens proximity to you yourself or to anybody you know or somewhere you know in, in your town or you know here if you're here in America State or other states or country or wherever, you know, terrible things do happen. Um, and so, with that, the fact that, you know, real life is quite scary, it is frightening in many ways, when you go to see a horror film, which, you know, when watching it, if it's a very good one, it'll, like, make you jump, you know, you might scream or whatever, you know, it basically relieves this tension that you have. Like, you have a tension in a way you're already scared, regardless if you know it or not, and this tension that's in you already before you even sit down to watch the film in a theater with a whole bunch of people you don't know. When the movie starts and, you know, it's effective and it's good and it's also scary and horrifying and all that stuff, good stuff that people go to see a horror film for, then you're essentially, you know, you're, as he put it, you're, like, you're being exercised, like, you, it's like a, sort of like an exorcism, this fear is being taken out of you, in a way, kind of like how, you know, a demon would be uh, taken out of somebody for being like, you know, if an exorcism was being uh, performed, you know, like a demon is being put out of you, well, or taken out of you, and, you know, this fear is being let out of you because you're jumping and might be screaming or whatever. Depending on what it is, the film is, and how effective it is, it could be, you know, your, your fears are being alleviated. You're being, it's being taken away. So you're able to watch a horror film, and you're able to release some of that tension that you have. And so, with this, it also helps with, you know, with humor. You're able to also laugh with when you're watching Scream in any of the films. Though I think the first film really is the best. Um, the sequels are quite good, but, you know, it's one of those things like you can't beat the, se uh, the first film. Um, no matter how good any of the sequels are, the first will always be the best. Um, some horror franchises, I think, you, you can make the... Um, argument that a sequel might be better i many people with the friday the 13th franchise you know usually pick part four or six as the best film of the franchise for me i've said it's part four i think that's the best <clears throat> also that film has quite a bit of humor in it also not that the films prior to part four had no humor but you know the final chapter definitely had a good amount of humor and i think you know the characters and a lot of ways were the are very realistic. You know, they're they feel quite real, perhaps a little more than what we had seen before. 
in these films, you know, many of the characters do seem, you know, they're a bit over the top, but also there's a grounding to them where, you know, certain characters you know, may be over the top, and yet what the when you look at them, they kind of fit. You know, Matthew Lillard in the original Scream, he kind of is one of those characters who's a bit all over the place. He's a bit, you know, uh, crazy, but that does fit, and there are people who are sort of like that, regard, you know, regardless if there's any killings going on or not, uh, by them or not, but, you know, you know Stu is very... over the top, but appropriately so. And these films also poke fun at horror, which I think is, sort of helps. Um, especially if one doesn't enjoy horror films. You know, you're able to laugh at some of the cliches and tropes that are brought up and executed in the films. Um, and it's real, it's, they're all entertaining films, too. I think that's also important. It's important to be entertained when you're watching a movie, regardless of whatever genre it is. If you're not entertained, then the movie really failed. Um, at least to you. you know, perhaps to some people, the movie worked. Um, but, you know, sometimes like if you're watching a comedy and you don't laugh, uh, then, you know, and you also don't think it's funny, and the film has failed. There are some movies that are humorous, and you know they're funny, you know where the jokes are, and that the jokes are funny, but you might not necessarily laugh out loud or anything. You might chuckle or laugh quietly to yourself. Um, and I guess perhaps there might be some moments in these movies that something similar happens. Like, you know, there's humor, you can find it funny, but you might not necessarily laugh out loud. Um, I remember when I saw scream on the big screen and people were laughing quite a bit though when they're you know they're the horror uh, terror uh, stuff was going on people were quite you know they were just quiet you know because it's like it's kind of intense you're not really gonna be laughing uh, during those moments um but for the parts that are funny you know, people were laughing, so the film is very effective in that way. So, you know, even after all these years later, um, and me, myself, re-watching this film, uh, and all these, you know, they still hold up. You know, 25 years later, 10 years later, everywhere in between, these movies still hold up quite well. Um, even, you know, even though 3 isn't my favorite... I still enjoy it quite a bit. You know, two is very good. Um, it's, you know, there there is always a charm to the sequels. You know, four, as I've illustrated before, you know, last time, was, uh, you know, has aged quite well. And I think in many ways it was ahead of its time. You know, with the whole reboots and remakes and all that. Um, there's just, you know, sometimes certain movies are ahead of their time, and it takes, you know, and at the maybe if it doesn't have an initial sort of love from the audience at first, as time goes on and you rewatch it, like perhaps with the other films, you know, you you might be able to appreciate certain films more. And I think that's what ha has happened with four. Um, and even three to an extent, um, but I have definitely noticed a more fondness for four uh, due to the reboots and remakes and all that stuff, you know, and how that's become very prevalent, and and not just for horror, but you know, just in general. I think just with that and alone has made four age quite well because it also now goes beyond horror. Yes, there are still various horror remakes and reboots, but we see many like superheroes and other franchises that are now, you know, have many reboots or remakes, regardless if 
a film or a franchise should ever be remade or rebooted. We see so many now, and, you know, it is a bit annoying. Um, but I think one thing that makes Scream, you know, as great and, and in many ways timeless, even though the first three really do reek of the 90s in the best way possible, I would say, just the overall story and the characters and the interactions and the humor and such and all these things have helped the film remain timeless in such a way you know it's still it's you know it's set in the 90s it's obvious but it's you know pretty you know still in so many ways relevant in what is going on today with movies as well as you know when you look back and you know and how maybe some of these things you could kind of see happening you know maybe in small increments but some of these things were always going to come for, to fruition like remakes and reboots um and i just you know think that's kind of interesting with scream and how after 25 years since this franchise began it's still going strong. Have three sequels out already, with a fourth sequel on the way next month. <clears throat> of course, without you know Wes Craven, uh, nor Kevin Williamson uh, as the writer, but he will be a producer. Um, I also never mentioned how the composer for all four of these films is a. Uh, Marco Marco Beltram. Um, I haven't really commented on the music much, but I, it's effective. It works for the whole point of you know the tension and the you know the moments of light that are there. But you know, there's there's it, the music is just great throughout all these four, uh, four films, and he does a great job with the. <clears throat> music and um he's not returning to score the fifth film uh unfortunately but you know uh, i don't know if it was like a scheduling thing or perhaps maybe he thought if wes craven isn't part of it of course he had passed away 2015 then you know he's not perhaps too interested let's say um or maybe it was a mixture of both perhaps he wasn't too keen but you know the idea of what the this new movie is he might be interested by that and think it's interesting but then so while he might be perhaps mixed maybe he just wasn't able to uh, scheduling wise like <clears throat> maybe he had too much stuff going on or perhaps it's something else entirely um, maybe they wanted to go in a different direction for the music. Um, hopefully, the fifth film will be good. Um, I do, you know, as I've said, uh, I, I do hope that the next film will honor the next, or honor the, these films and the franchise as a whole and Wes Craven. Not too worried about, you know, Kevin Williamson, but because he's a part of it, even though he's not, you know, writing uh, the film. But he's producer, so he's involved. Um, first time, you know, the Weinsteins will be involved, because, you know, even though Dimension did make the first four, Paramount now uh, seems to own uh, the rights now, and have been releasing all the... Of various Blu-rays, if you know. Here, Anchor Bay released this uh, Blu-ray and the DVD, as well as uh, Lionsgate and Miramax have uh, you know released this set. Um, the DVDs of the first three are from Dimension, and this is Paramount, which is the new company that uh, is going to you know produce the next film and has their logo all over the uh, first four films 
Um, yeah, I just... I love these films. Um, I know what, that I can understand why some might not enjoy these movies. Um, you know, either they're too meta or might be seen as too comical. Uh, but I think they're very good. I think they're good, especially for the horror genre. Um, slashers in particular, because that, that, that in particular subgenre was really dead. The sequels to the big franchises that people love were not as popular anymore. The new horror films that were coming out of the 90s, you know, like there's like Candyman, for instance, or Leprechaun, you know, the Leprechaun kind of had a cult, uh, as a cult following, but still, I think it was very financially successful upon its release, but it has gone a cult following ever since. Those films got sequels, even if, you know, people might think, you know, they didn't necessarily need <clears throat> sequels, or at least the sequels that do exist, perhaps they could have gone in a different direction, but, you know, they are what they are. Um, and Scream came around at the right time, got more people interested in horror again. Emin, you know, launched Kevin Williamson's career, helped Wes Craven get back on top, helped uh, establish David Arquette, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox as full-blown stars. I mean, Courtney Cox was already popular on Friends, but, you know, this helped her really with a film career. And then people like Matthew Lillard, Skeet Ulrich, Rose McGowan, Jamie Kennedy, Luke Schreiber, and all these people who were in all these films really got a big boost. You know, either they were already established in some way, and this helped elevate their career but even more, or it really helped their career, you know, and they were uh, uh, exposed to uh, the world. Um, again, I just love this franchise. Um, it's very, it's always entertaining to watch, uh, you know, a marathon form or even just one at a time. Though I find if I watch just one, then that's it. I'll just watch the first film. Um, but every so often I like to watch all, uh, four. Um, and for the 25th anniversary of the original film it's uh, it's fantastic to watch again um, and again it does hold up very well and uh, yeah that's it that's the it's also the last video for this year because yeah it's uh, New Year's Eve so um, aside from just uh, you know have a good day, have a good weekend, and a good week. I hope you'll have a good new year. Uh, I hope your year that uh, has been really well. It's been good. My year's gone very well. I'm quite happy with how everything has, you know, turned out. I mean, sure, certain things might have been perhaps slow, like uh, slower than perhaps I would have preferred for certain things, but, you know, that happens in life, but for overall, with those certain things that are very small in the long run, I've had a very good year, um, and uh, I hope you have too, and if perhaps you didn't have a good year, hopefully next year will be better for you. Um, I am planning to take a break uh, from like these kind of videos, like uh, talking about movies, um, and I also want to sort of... <clears throat> go and when I do films um, talk about films at least uh, I want to like if it's like a franchise let's say I'll, I'll probably do more of them throughout the week not just Fridays because I've been wanted to just do something for a while just consistently make videos every single week you know if I make more than one then great but I thought that was a very uh, 
achievable goal. And I still want to kind of do that, but I might take more breaks here and there. And if, like, for instance, if I do, like, a franchise, like I did uh, Friday the 13th, that was every Friday <laughs> throughout the whole summer. And while that was all fun, I did take up a lot of time, and I would have probably loved to have talked about more movies and other stuff, and not just have to shove that kind of stuff after I, uh, you know, finished up the uh, talking about that franchise. Uh, so, like, if I ever, like, talk about all the Halloween films or some of these other franchises that I enjoy and haven't talked about or haven't talked much about, but, um, you know, they're quite, have many films in them, what I'll probably do is, like, for, like, something like Halloween, as I just mentioned an example, I might do, like, three a week. So, of course, I'll record them, the videos, uh, beforehand, and then when you see them, they'll be probably like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and that will go on perhaps for, like, a full month, um, and it'll be done just so it's that, you know, it's, I'm able to get out all of those within a timely manner, and that. You know, not as much time goes on and new, like new movies I've seen either in the theater or gotten on Blu-ray or something and I've watched and I want to talk about, but, you know, gotta wait for that sort of like franchise stuff to be over with because I don't want to necessarily break the flow uh, of discussion with those movies. So if I do that, then I'll probably... You know, if I do it that way, I'll be able to get out more stuff in a more timely manner, so it won't take up, like, an entire, like, season. Like, uh, and yeah, that's something that I'll, I've, I'm going to look, uh, looking at doing. And so, yeah. And also, I might also just take some more breaks here and there, that way I'm able to be more, more recharged and be able to be more like up to discussing these films and all that stuff even though I love talking about them still sometimes it is good to take some uh, break once in a while and so I will be doing that um, and I also have some plans uh, of what I want to do next year um, for instance I do want to talk about all the Quentin Tarantino films that exist primarily um, the, well, specifically the ones that he's directed. Um, so, look forward to that um, sometime next year. And yeah, after I do that, I'll take a bit of a break and then yeah, resume as normal. And probably take a break here and there and just sort of do that. That way I'm more, uh, you know, I don't feel like I'm just sort of like doing all of this and then doing it either all at once or uh, just and overloading myself or just um, feel like I have to do it because like oh it's I need to make it a video or two for this month or maybe next month in advance and all that um, so yeah that's sort of like how I want to uh, do things uh, from here on out. Of course, this doesn't really have a whole lot to do with Scream now, but, you know, it's the end of the year, and I'm not going to make any new videos here and there, like the film talk stuff for a little bit. But, you know, when I do come back, I will uh, talk more. So, yeah. I hope that's all fine with you, but, um, yeah, I hope all of you will have a good day, hope you all have a good weekend, and a great week, and a great new year, hope your year has been very good, and hope next year will be just as good, if not better, and, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the stream, uh, franchise discussions I've done, and, uh, see you all next time.